Climbing to heaven like a skyrocket? Heaven's the wrong destination for that baby. That's a zero, the real McCoy. down over Alaska. And as luck would have it, the only thing that got really damaged was the pilot. He broke his neck. Swell, huh? Think he could recognize her again? This is the Japanese Zero. Take a good look at her. Your recognition of the Zero may save your life. Your recognition of the Zero may destroy its life. Watch her closely. Study every characteristic to aid you in your recognition. Look at that nose. A perfect circle broken only by the oil cooler. Note the slight dihedral angle. Look at that low wing and middle tail. Notice the oil cooler and air scoop directly below the engine cowling. See how the fuselage tapers to a point in the rear. It's like a big cigar. Note the tapering edges of the wings, the rounded tips. See how straight the line is from engine to tail. And that tail, see how the leading edge of the vertical piece tapers more than the trailing edge. Look how it curves out to a point away from the nose. Think you can recognize her? Don't think. Be sure. Watch her. Watch her closely. Yes, we know. That's no zero. That's a P-40. But did you know? They don't look alike to you now, do they? Look at the difference in the shape of those noses. The P-40, with its deep radiator, is oval. The Zero is a perfect circle, broken only by that oil cooler. Get those undercarriage fairings on the P-40. Compare the tails. The tail of the P-40 is high. The tail of the Zero is middle. Let's look at her from below. Look at the pointed nose of the P-40 and the blunt nose of the Zero. The leading edge of the wings of the P-40 has no taper. The wings of the Zero taper back. The tail of the P-40 is notched. The tail of the Zero tapers into the fuselage, which extends beyond it. Now, let's take them in profile. The engine of the P-40 is in line. The Zero is radial. Note the deep radiator on the P-40 as compared to the shallow oil cooler and air scoop on the Zero. Next, see how the cock canopy on the P-40 is much further back from the nose than on the Zero. What's more, the canopy on the P-40 fits into the fuselage while the canopy on the Zero sits on the fuselage. Now for the tails. The P-40s is rounded and curves in toward the nose. The Zero's is pointed and curves out away from the nose. No one could possibly mistake them for each other, could they? You think not? Well, let's see. Let's take the case of one pilot. His name was Jimmy Saunders. His story starts on the day when he was flying to a base somewhere in the Far East. Come in. Lieutenant Saunders reporting for duty, sir. Glad to have you with us, Lieutenant. Glad to be here, Major. We can certainly use you. Sit down. Cigarette? Oh, thank you, sir. How was the flight over? Well, I made it, sir, with the help of a P-40. You like our P-40? Oh, yes, sir. It's a nice airplane. Good. 
Then maybe we can count on you not to shoot any of them down. I didn't have any plans along that line, sir. It's been done, you know. You mean jet pilots? I mean American pilots. Men with as much enthusiasm for the P-40 as you have, but with an unfortunate lack of ability to tell a friend from an enemy. Excuse me, sir, but how could anybody mistake a P-40 for a Zero? A great many things can happen in the excitement of preparing for combat. Too many pilots are too anxious to make sure of the kill. They start shooting before they've made certain what they're shooting at. It's a damn sight better to let a Zero get away than to knock down one of your own planes. Say nothing of one of your own men. We feel enough to spare around here. Well, sir, I had no idea. Well, we're not broadcasting the fact. I know, but... Now, don't misunderstand me, Lieutenant. It's not a common occurrence. Most of our men know their planes. Uh, identification becomes second nature to them. But there's still a doubt in their minds. They maneuver close enough to make sure. Uh, of course, there is such a thing as being too cautious. Take the case of the man who drew those silhouettes. Say, that's quite a job. He had plenty of time for it. Been flat on his back for two months. Shot down while he was still maneuvering around, trying to decide if the other plane was a zero or not. But he found out. If he'd known his identification, that zero might never have gotten him. Well, he learned his lesson. And to make certain that others would profit by it, he put it all down in those. All right, let's see if you can do your wafting on the zero. Yes, sir. With or without looking. You might as well make it easy on yourself now. It'll be a lot tougher upstairs. Yes, sir. Wings. Leading edge tapers, trailing edge tapers, tips rounded, slight dihedral angle. You might add to that that there are two 20 millimeter cannons mounted one in each wing, probably Swiss Ehrlichen guns. Yes, sir. Here's something I didn't know about, sir. Huh? Oh, yes. The wing tips can be folded so as to utilize more space in a carrier. Incidentally, the span is 39 feet 4 inches. All right, go on with the engine. Engine, radial, Mitsubishi version of our cyclone. That's right. There are twin row 14 cylinders. Now for the fuselage. Fuselage. Blunt nose with a spinner on it. Cockpit canopy sits on the fuselage. Retractable landing gear with fairing plates. Say, uh, there seems to be one gear missing, sir. The gears are operated hydraulically. As a result, the wheels retract alternately. I guess there are a couple of things I don't know about this airplane, sir. I'm glad to hear you admit it. That's the beginning of wisdom. The wings in the fuselage are in one piece, made of dual aluminum. Uh, there's another feature worth noting. The entire fuselage is flush riveted. With the result, there are very few protuberances to cause wind resistance. The length is 28 feet, 5 inches. There's a pair of machine guns <coughs> mounted in grooves above the cowling. They're 7.7 .7 millimeter, and they're synchronized to fire through the propeller. I hope you don't ever get them on your tail. I'm with you there, sir. <laughs> All right, finish her up. Tail. Leading edge of flat surface tapers more than trailing edge, with the fuselage extending to a point beyond it. Leading edge of vertical piece tapers more than trailing edge. Tail is pointed, curves out away from the nose. I guess that's it, sir. Good enough. As you probably know, there are three types of zeros. One is a single float plane without rig. All three have slightly varying characteristics. But this is the type you're most apt to tangle with, so get to know her. All of her. Yes, sir. I'll look for the balls of rouge on her wings and fuselage. Yeah, I wouldn't depend on that if I were you. The Japs have a neat trick of painting her all sorts of colors. Sometimes even like our P-40s. Coffee? Uh, no, thanks. Well, sir, how soon do I get a chance to knock one of them down? Soon enough. But don't get any idea if the Zero's a pushover. With 340 miles an hour top speed, a service ceiling of 35,500 feet, and a normal range of 700 miles, increased by a droppable extra fuel tank, there's not much she can't do.